Welcome back to our channel. Today, we're delving into the world of television to remember 20 TV stars who met untimely fates during the production of their shows. From unexpected accidents to health-related tragedies, these stars left a lasting impact on the entertainment industry. Join us as we pay homage to these remarkable individuals and reflect on the legacies they've left behind. Now, let's get started. Number 1. Miguel Ferrer, a highly skilled American actor, was born on February 7, 1955, in Santa Monica, California. Renowned for his versatile performances in both film and television, Ferrer rose to prominence at the age of 31 with his standout portrayal of Bob Morton in the iconic film, Robocop, in 1987. Throughout his career, his acting prowess shown in notable TV series such as, Twin Peaks, and, NCIS, Los Angeles. Additionally, Ferrer's distinctive voice made him a sought-after voice actor, contributing to animated shows like, Mulan. Unfortunately, on January 19, 2017, during the production of, NCIS, Los Angeles, Ferrer succumbed to throat cancer at the age of 61. Despite this tragic loss, his contributions to the industry stand as a lasting testament to his talent and versatility. I'd like for you to read it in an adaptation of a short story of mine, and uh, I did, and uh, went and did the movie. Or, or avant-garde, he really is an original thinker. He really is a creative guy who has thoughts unlike... Number two. Christopher Evan Welch, a promising American actor, was born on September 28, 1965, in Fort Belvoir, Virginia. He rose to prominence through exceptional performances on both stage and screen. Welch's breakthrough occurred in his late 30s when he portrayed Peter Gregory in the acclaimed HBO series Silicon Valley. His career featured diverse roles in film, television, and theater, earning him critical acclaim and solidifying his reputation as a skilled character actor. Sadly, Welch's promising trajectory was abruptly halted when he passed away at the age of 48 on December 2, 2013, during the production of Silicon Valley. His untimely death, attributed to lung cancer, left the industry mourning the loss of a talented actor on the brink of greater success. Worse syllabus. You turned down $10 million to keep Pied Piper. What did I buy? You bought the algorithm, which... No! What I'm... He's uh, a lower class, uh, what one, one might describe as a brigand or a ne'er-do-well, uh, you know, a, a ruffian. He, he hangs in the... Number 3. Lynn Thigpen, a highly skilled American actress, was born on December 22, 1948, in Joliet, Illinois. Her remarkable performances across theater, film, and television brought her widespread acclaim. Particularly, she achieved recognition for portraying the chief in the beloved children's TV series, Where in the World is Carmen Sandiego, during the 1990s, earning her an Emmy Award. Thigpen showcased exceptional versatility throughout her career, seamlessly navigating both comedic and dramatic roles. Sadly, on March 12, 2003, at the age of 54, during the production of the TV series, The District, Lynn Thigpen passed away due to a cerebral hemorrhage. Her untimely departure marked a loss for the entertainment industry, but her legacy persists through the enduring impact of her impressive body of work. Very friendly. That surprises you? Well, can I get a hello or something? How'd you find me? Wendy Wasserstein, Wendy Wasserstein, Wendy Wasserstein, what a wonderful, wonderful name. Wendy Wasserstein, thank you so much for Judith. That's my mantra tonight. Number four, Adam West, born William West Anderson on September 19, 1928, in Walla Walla, Washington, was a legendary American actor. He gained widespread recognition as the original Batman in the 1960s television series, bringing a distinctive and campy style to the caped crusader character. West, in his late 30s at the time, portrayed the Dark Knight with deadpan delivery, earning him household fame. His career extended over several decades, involving voice acting in animated series and appearances in various films and TV shows. West attained cult status and endeared himself to fans with his humorous approach to the superhero role. Unfortunately, Adam West passed away on June 9, 2017, at the age of 88, succumbing to leukemia. Despite his departure, 
he remains a lasting pop culture icon and a cherished figure in the realm of superheroes. Uh, yes, when we arrive at a theater, <laughs> yeah. it's almost like uh, maybe the film broke or something. Yeah. And suddenly we materialize right out of the screen. Do they split it? Confidence in what you're doing and see what you're doing and think, hmm, well, maybe that guy has the right idea. And this is what happened to me. Number five, Corey Monteith, born on May 11, 1982, in Calgary, Alberta, Canada, was a Canadian actor and musician. He gained widespread recognition for his portrayal of Finn Hudson in the acclaimed television series Glee, which premiered in 2009 when he was 27. Monteith's talent and captivating presence on screen distinguished him in the show, earning him a devoted fan following. His professional journey encompassed acting, singing, and collaborating with the Glee cast. Additionally, he explored film roles and contributed to the ensemble in the musical film Glee, the 3D concert movie. Unfortunately, Corey Monteith passed away on July 13, 2013, in Vancouver, Canada, at the age of 31, succumbing to a drug overdose. His untimely death served as a poignant reminder of the challenges associated with addiction, underscoring the significance of mental health and substance abuse awareness. I was... People have always made a lot of assumptions. You know, you look, you see this this uh, young all-American quarterback looking dude on the show. It was hell to pay. It was it was bad. That I was woke rough. up and it was it was uh, instantly throwing up everywhere. It was because you had horrible. all planned out. You were going to come to the show and then uh, thank number six, Nancy Marchand, born on June 19, 1928, in Buffalo, New York, was an esteemed American actress. She achieved both fame and critical acclaim for her portrayal of Margaret Pinchon in the television series Lou Grant during the late 1970s. Marchand's recognition soared in her 50s, showcasing her exceptional acting prowess and earning her four Emmy Awards throughout her career. With a remarkable presence in film, television, and theater, she also secured a Tony Award for her stage performances. Nancy Marchand's depiction of strong, intricate female characters left an enduring imprint on the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, she passed away on June 18, 2000, at the age of 71, while working on The Sopranos, succumbing to complications from lung cancer. Her legacy remains as that of a distinguished actress in American television and theater. Some people would have you believe wonders white nothing and whole wheat's the only nourishing bread ever baked. Hogwash. And rich white bread like Wonder has as much thigh and knife. Not like your normal, regular person. David is off the wall. And he's charming. And he can take a lot of things from real life. Number seven. Steve Irwin, born Stephen Robert Irwin on February 22, 1962, in Essendon, Victoria, Australia, was an adored wildlife expert and television personality. He gained fame as the lively and captivating host of the wildlife documentary series The Crocodile Hunter. Irwin's distinctive approach to wildlife conservation and his fearless interactions with perilous animals endeared him to audiences globally. By the age of 35, he had already forged a thriving career centered around wildlife education, featuring numerous wildlife documentaries and the establishment of the Australia Zoo. Unfortunately, Steve Irwin passed away on September 4, 2006, at 44, while filming a documentary titled Ocean's Deadliest. A tragic incident occurred during a diving expedition when he was pierced in the chest by a stingray's barb, shocking the world and abruptly concluding the life of a dedicated conservationist. Sorry to bother you, but I want everything to be perfect for your anniversary. Okay. So I've got these two animals that I'm thinking about closing with tonight. I've got Wally, the American alligator. You know, it was in its infancy back then, and um, it was so tough that Dad had to um, go fishing on the sideline. He had to grow strawberries and capsicums to actually support. Number 8. John Eric Hexham, born on November 5, 1957, in Englewood, New Jersey, was a captivating American actor and model. His ascent to fame began in the early 1980s, where he quickly garnered attention for his remarkable looks and charisma. At the youthful age of 24, Hexham secured a role in the TV series Cover Up, portraying a covert operative. With modeling and acting assignments, including a prominent role in the miniseries North and South, his career was on a promising trajectory. Unfortunately, on October 12, 1984, while on the set of Cover Up, Hexham playfully pointed a prop gun loaded with blanks at his temple, oblivious to the potential hazards. 
The discharge from the blanks resulted in a severe head injury, leading to his premature death at 26. His untimely passing underscored the dangers associated with firearms, even in the controlled environment of a film set. I was a bit surprised. I, I figured people would be impressed. But they didn't seem to be really. They were just like, they say something like, I'm with it. I have great fle I have flexibility with my character. I mean, so he's a fun guy. Male model was, it was a great time, but the, the, the guy I played in it was always upset, didn't want to leave the ranch, nobody was nice to him. Number nine. Mary Kay Bergman, born on June 5, 1961, in Los Angeles, California, was a talented American voice actress celebrated for her extraordinary vocal range. She embarked on her career in the 1980s and rose to prominence as the voice behind numerous iconic animated characters. Bergman began leaving her mark on the industry in her 30s, contributing significantly to popular shows like South Park, where she skillfully portrayed most of the female characters. Her notable achievements included breathing life into beloved animated figures. Unfortunately, on November 11, 1999, at the age of 38, Mary Kay Bergman took her own life, resulting in a poignant loss for the world of voice acting. She grappled with severe depression and the debilitating impact of its affliction. Careful, we can't offend anybody. You know, God forbid we should say something that might offend someone else, some group of people. And we, we make fun of everything. Nothing is sacred on our Last year, this is amazing. Do you have a favorite character that you enjoy since you do so many? Well, for this film, there's so many in there that I love. Um, there's a really goofy... Number 10. Andy Whitfield, born on October 17, 1971 in Amluch, Anglesey, Wales, was a Welsh actor celebrated for portraying Spartacus in the acclaimed television series Spartacus, Blood and Sand. Rising to fame in his late 30s, Whitfield captivated audiences with his compelling depiction of the legendary gladiator. With noteworthy performances in both television and film, he garnered a devoted fan base and earned critical acclaim for his role as Spartacus. Unfortunately, Andy Whitfield's promising career was cut short by his passing on September 11, 2011, at the age of 39, succumbing to non-Hodgkin lymphoma. His untimely death not only halted a budding career but also represented a poignant loss for the entertainment industry, as he stood on the cusp of even greater success. It's kind of like, I think for any actor, it's kind of a dream role to be, you know, play someone who was actually real, and, uh, and to try and, you know, reason but... I'm pretty sure anyone would have been. It's one of the most extreme things I've ever gone through. And uh, there's a lot of pain. Number 11. Bill Paxton, born on May 17, 1955, in Fort Worth, Texas, was a versatile American actor and filmmaker. He initially garnered attention through supporting roles in popular 80s films like The Terminator and Aliens, stepping into the spotlight in his 30s. His career, spanning more than four decades, featured iconic roles in movies such as Twister, Titanic, and Apollo 13. Paxton's achievements encompassed memorable performances across various genres, earning him a dedicated fan base. Sadly, he passed away on February 25, 2017, at the age of 61, succumbing to complications from heart surgery. His premature death was a significant loss to the entertainment industry, marking the conclusion of a distinguished career in film and television. I was seven years old, my brother was nine, we both had matching red blazers, shorts, burr haircuts, and I'm sitting there, my mother's, you know, negotiating a ticket, and all of a sudden Peter Lorre comes walking. Lorre Stewart and Susie Amos, we were all up in um, Halifax, Nova Scotia, we were shooting on the Keldish, which is the Russian research vessel that had the two mere sub. Number 12. Freddie Prinz, born Frederick Carl Prutzel on June 22, 1954, in New York City, was a gifted American stand-up comedian and actor. He rose to prominence in the 1970s, notably for his portrayal of Chico Rodriguez in the TV series Chico and the Man. Prinz catapulted to stardom at the young age of 19, showcasing a distinctive comedic style and promising acting talent. As one of the first young Latino actors to achieve widespread success in Hollywood, his career held great promise. Unfortunately, he grappled with personal challenges and depression, leading to his tragic death by suicide on January 29, 1977, at the age of 22, a profound loss felt deeply by the entertainment world and his devoted fans. Music, uh, especially for a Hungarian. Uh, <laughs> my father's gypsy, my mother's Puerto Rican. I was very musical as a child. My father, being that he was a gypsy, of course, he bought me a violin. 
Looking good. Thank you. I went, I just was, came back from New York. I was there to visit all the Puerto Ricans. Number 13. Red Fox, born John Elroy Sanford on December 9, 1922, in St. Louis, Missouri, was a trailblazing American comedian and actor. Rising to prominence through his stand-up comedy, he gained recognition for his daring humor and groundbreaking routines. Fox achieved fame in his mid-40s with the release of the comedy album Laugh of the Party. His career spanned comedy, television, and film, and he notably excelled in his iconic portrayal of Fred G. Sanford in the sitcom Sanford and Son. Unfortunately, on October 11, 1991, at the age of 68, Red Fox suffered a heart attack on the set of the TV series The Royal Family. His premature passing marked a significant loss to the world of comedy and entertainment, leaving an enduring impact on the industry. Sanford, and I have a husband's my real name, so it is an odd for me to turn around and answer because <laughs> Sanford is my family name. What changes has... It's Sanford and so if they don't have a part for Fred, there's nothing else left. So Red is dead even without Fred, you know. So I know I could do some other parts. Uh, some Number 14. John Ritter, born on September 17, 1948, in Burbank, California, was a cherished American actor and comedian. He rose to prominence with his portrayal of Jack Tripper in the popular TV sitcom Three's Company during the late 1970s. Ritter, in his late 20s at the time, became a household name thanks to his comedic talent and adept physical comedy. His career, spanning decades and encompassing film and theater, garnered numerous awards and accolades, including an Emmy Award for Three's Company. Unfortunately, on September 11, 2003, during the production of the TV series Eight Simple Rules for Dating My Teenage Daughter, Ritter suffered an aortic dissection, leading to his passing at the age of 54. His departure left a profound void in the entertainment world and among his devoted fans. Be honest. Yeah, I wanted to be, um, my brother went to Hollywood High. He went to a handicapped school for the first part of his life, but in the 10th grade, he decided to try. Failed miserably. Oh my God. There was a sound like this. Ow! No, coming from my leg. <laughs> Your and leg I, said, yeah, ow, no. Yeah, it said many, many other <laughs> words in Italian. Or Number 15. Phil Hartman, born on September 24, 1948, in Brantford, Ontario, Canada, was a distinguished Canadian-American comedian, actor, and voice artist. Making his mark in the 1980s, Hartman gained prominence through his comedic prowess and versatility on the sketch comedy show Saturday Night Live. In his 30s, he earned acclaim for his exceptional talent. His influence spanned television, film, and voice acting, with a notable presence on The Simpsons, where he lent his voice to memorable characters like Troy McClure and Lionel Hutz. Sadly, on May 28, 1998, at the age of 49, Phil Hartman's life was tragically cut short when he was fatally shot by his wife, Bryn Hartman, who later died by suicide. His passing left a profound void, as he was revered for his significant contributions to the world of comedy and entertainment. Man 68, because as you know, uh, Popeye has two voices. He goes, wow, all right, Olives. But he also goes, ha, ha, ha. in New York, and uh, we make our home in Los Angeles. So you're back and forth a lot, you're traveling a lot? Back and forth a lot. A lot. Yeah. In fact, flying to New York from L.A. last time, I mean, we went on this MGM Grand right. Air. Number 16, John Spencer, born on December 20th, 1946, in New York City was a talented American actor. He gained fame for his role as Leo McGarry in the acclaimed television series The West Wing, for which he was in his mid-50s. Spencer's career was marked by his exceptional acting skills, with achievements including an Emmy Award for his portrayal of Leo McGarry. Tragically, on December 16, 2005, at the age of 58, John Spencer passed away due to a heart attack during the production of The West Wing. His unexpected death was a somber moment in the television industry, as he was a respected and beloved figure, contributing significantly to the success of the show. Because I think the written word, which I think is so far and above the run of the mill, Aaron's writing is so extraordinarily unique, intelligent, witty, uh, ability to put his work or his desire to put his work ahead of everything else in his life, his devotion to friendship to the people he cares about, Leo is... Number 17. Larry Hagman, born on September 21, 1931, 
in Fort Worth, Texas, was a distinguished American actor renowned for his prominent role as the charismatic and scheming J.R. Ewing in the acclaimed TV series Dallas. Hagman rose to prominence in his early 50s, and his portrayal of J.R. remains an iconic character in the annals of television history. Throughout his career, he embraced diverse roles in film, television, and stage, earning notable accolades, including two Emmy Awards for Dallas. Unfortunately, on November 23, 2012, at the age of 81, Larry Hagman passed away during the production of the revived Dallas series, succumbing to complications from acute myeloid leukemia. His demise was a significant loss, as he had become a celebrated figure in the realm of entertainment. Yeah, deserved it. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. The bad guys finish first, don't they? I can interrupt you tonight, because I'm feeling specifically. I was in the American Air Force before. And dated the Collins sisters, Joan and Jackie. Yes, I did. I had the privilege of doing that. Yes. <laughs> it, was, it was a privilege, indeed a privilege. Oh, God. They... Number 18. Luke Perry, born Coy Luther Perry III on October 11, 1966, in Mansfield, Ohio, was an acclaimed American actor. He gained widespread recognition for his portrayal of Dylan McKay in the iconic 1990s TV series Beverly Hills 90210. Perry became a heartthrob and teen idol in his early 20s, and his versatile career spanned television, film, and theater, earning him numerous Teen Choice Awards. Sadly, on February 27, 2019, at the age of 52, Luke Perry suffered a massive stroke and passed away while actively engaged in the production of the TV series Riverdale. His unexpected departure sent shockwaves through fans and the entertainment industry, marking the premature end of a promising career. You gotta, you gotta keep really in mind that it's not me they're coming out to see, it's, it's this character that I play. And um, I'm very, very flattered that it, it's gone over as well as it has. had uh, colon cancer, and she, she is one of, of uh, over a million people who are survivors. And when they started telling me about their experience and I heard some of the math about... Number 19. Nicholas Colasanto born on January 19, 1924, in Providence, Rhode Island, was an American actor and director best known for portraying Ernie Coach Pontuso on the beloved TV series Cheers. Colasanto achieved fame in his late 50s through this iconic character, a lovable yet somewhat dim-witted bartender. His career spanned both acting and directing, with diverse roles in film and television. Despite his relatively brief tenure on Cheers due to his age, his portrayal of Coach left an enduring impact on viewers. Sadly, Nicholas Colasanto passed away at the age of 61 on February 12, 1985, during the production of Cheers. His death resulted from a heart-related issue, marking a poignant loss for the show's cast and devoted fans. Ago, I worked in a bar. Is that right? Yep, I washed dishes, I was a short order cook, a sandwich man. Well, typecasting. Yeah. Yes. And I always You're taking me seriously. I'm, a, I'm only kidding you. What a fucking kid. That's the best oh, fucking fighter around. Oh, the Moulinians, forget about it. Number 20. Jim Henson, born on September 24, 1936, in Greenville, Mississippi, was a pioneering American puppeteer, filmmaker, and creative force. He gained global recognition as the mastermind behind The Muppets, a beloved ensemble of characters. Henson was in his 30s when the Muppets initially rose to prominence. His career spanned puppetry, television, and film, with notable accomplishments including Sesame Street and The Muppet Show. Henson's groundbreaking approach to puppetry and storytelling left an indelible mark on the entertainment industry. Unfortunately, on May 16, 1990, at the age of 53, Jim Henson succumbed to complications from streptococcal toxic shock syndrome, a severe bacterial infection. His passing was a significant loss to the realms of creativity and imagination, yet his enduring legacy lives on through the timeless charm of the Muppets. Since then, we've, uh, Kermit has evolved, and he's changed around a lot. We did, uh, this is the way Kermit looks nowadays. Aha! Uh -huh. I think, um, well, I think puppets have a kind of appeal to kids, to adults. They've been around forever. You know, as long as we've had theater, we've had one kind or another. As we conclude our tribute to these 20 TV stars, we remember the moments of laughter, drama, and suspense they brought to our screens. Their unfortunate departures may have been unexpected, but their contributions to the world of television will forever be cherished. If you found this video informative and touching, don't forget to like, share, 
and subscribe for more content honoring the world of entertainment. Thank you for joining us today.